housing construction in the Latin American and Caribbean region. We are Tildem Kurtak, Nikita Schweitzer and Susana Cordoves Pupo. The report deals with the wider topic of housing in Latin America and the Caribbean, but this presentation will focus on social housing in Cuba. Social housing is understood as a residential project for those who could not otherwise afford accommodation, which is either built by the government or a non-governmental organization. Residents can purchase units, rent them at subsidized prices or be given them. Housing in Latin America and the Caribbean exhibits a wide range of different living types, as well as various options for owning or renting. Unfortunately, around 54 million families in Latin America and the Caribbean live in substandard accommodation or do not have housing. In Cuba, the housing deficit currently sits at 900,000 units in 2018. The rate of housing produced by the government is much lower than the growing number of people needing homes. Like almost everywhere else in the world, housing is one of the most prominent social problems in Cuba. However, due to its socialist politics, housing policies and provision look very different to the rest of Latin America. For the past 50 years, most Cuban households have owned their homes as personal property and renting is much less common than in other countries in the region. Over the past 10 years, the Cuban government has been experimenting with the legalization of the housing market. Here we see a number of typical housing typologies in Cuba. Before the revolution, Cuba was, in terms of urbanization, already ahead of other developed Latin American countries. The majority of its housing stock built before 1959 was located in urban areas. It is said that the issue of housing was a poignant factor in the revolution and was one of the first public policy issues addressed by Cuba's socialist government. In 1960, the government established the urban reform law, which stated that housing is for people to live in, not to live from, and with this put a stop to all renting. In 1969, an experimental prototype of a lightweight prefabricated housing system, Multiflex, was built in Wajat, just outside of Havana. In the 1970s, a heavy prefabricated construction system was introduced by the Soviet Union and became very popular. This construction system sparked the creation of micro brigadas. Micro brigadas were a form of collective self-help participation involving future residents as construction workers with strong governmental support by means of building materials and equipment. 65% of all new dwellings in the 70s were built in this manner. In 1984, the new general housing law allowed the sale of housing between private parties, but only with the government's approval. By the 1990s, over 85% of Cuban households owned their own homes and paid only small fees for maintenance and utilities. In 2003, another law was passed that prohibited all private sales of property. However, this did not stop the exchange of homes between Cubans. They worked around the restrictions in order to create a real estate market that was based on the legal act of swapping housing units. This market was visible in Havana every Saturday morning as people gathered on the boulevard called Paseo del Prado. All this changed in 2011 when Decree Law number 288 was passed, allowing Cubans to sell their houses privately at prices set by themselves. This shift created a unique new real estate market with no history of previous sales to guide pricing, no real estate agents and no mortgages yet available. This was an attempt to bring an illegal practice that was already happening underground to the surface. The government also sought to alleviate some of the burden on them to provide housing. Looking at the capital city of Havana, Despite a Cuban law preventing people from migrating into the capital, Havana is still struggling with a major housing crisis. And this is where we have located our two case studies. Havana del Este is a social housing complex built between 1959 and 1961. It has been called the best Cuban social housing estate. The Unidad No. 1 building was declared a national landmark in 1991. The scheme was designed for roughly 8,000 people with 1,306 units comprising 
four-storey walk-ups and 11-storey towers. The buildings were well constructed and have aged well. They are loved and well looked after by their residents. This social housing scheme called progressive social housing with the use of ferro cement is a complex of buildings dedicated to house professors of the Technical University of Havana, Jose Antonio Etseveria. It comprises several housing blocks of six stories each connected by bridges. There is a total of 72 units in the complex and it is intended for between 229 and 253 inhabitants. There are a number of different types of units which allow for the growth and modification of the home as a family grows or shrinks in size. Additionally, we have interviewed a number of Cuban students about their personal housing experiences in Havana. Interesting to note are the following. All households own their own homes. They all know their neighbors and feel that there is a strong sense of community. Only a few have done alterations and these have been minor. A number of them are examples of social housing, both old and new.